Hey, everybody, uh, math whiz here. Uh, sorry if you can barely hear me or if I seem a little tired. I'm, I'm a little sick right now, but, um, hopefully that will change at some point. But, uh, I to I made a video, like, a few weeks ago that, uh, it's supposedly about transhumanism, and, uh, that's, that's something that I feel rather strong about, so... I decided I should make a response to this video. Whether or not he was actually addressing transhumanism, which as we will see, he wasn't. Okay. And I'm going to have to say, this video titled Transhumanism and Such is real spam. Yeah, and yet you never address transhumanism anywhere in your video, except maybe for one passive comment, which is aimed at a straw man, pretty much. Uh, yeah, and also the very next thing that we find out is he still doesn't know what spam is. Cussing and swearing is a degenerated sarcasm for those who have lost their decent vocabulary. They really don't know how to do proper exclamations or proper adjectives or whatever. They just think putting forth swearing or whatever is just going to make them right or whatever. Uh, swearing is a linguistic convention. Um, you know, they're a way of putting an exclamation mark on a sentence. A more powerful exclamation mark than any other word used. In fact, it's because these words are kind of taboo uh, in our society that these words are that powerful. Uh, by telling us not to use them, you're just giving them more power. And the other thing is you seem to be treating them almost as if they have some kind of magic power. Uh, they don't. Most, most of them at least are four letters long, one syllable. They don't have any magic powers. It's just a way of expressing a powerful exclamation mark. Now, I try not to overuse them so that they retain their power when they are used. And I hate those guys who try to uh, <coughs> use them too much, just as much as you do, because they take away from the power of these words. But, uh, I don't know, just because somebody swears throughout a video, it doesn't say anything about whether the content of their video is correct or not. And I'm going to have to say, atheists who, like, use God's name as a cuss word, they're really contradicting their position. They are, like, basically, atheism is just about rejecting the gospel of Christ, not superstitious religion. I know, I to I, that you have been corrected multiple times on both of those points. Uh, presumably, you're either not listening, or you're just not getting it, or you're dishonest not trying to insult you or anything, but those are the only three options I can uh, think of. First of all, you're conflating atheism with positive atheism or strong atheism. In other words, you're conflating the position that no gods exist, or more specifically the Christian god doesn't exist, with the lack of a belief in a god. And I know you have been corrected on that. I've seen plenty of videos directing you on that. And the second thing is, uh, you claim to be against religion several times and you claim that evolution is a religion. Um, most dictionaries will define religion as a belief in a supernatural being. I know that dictionaries aren't a particularly useful way of uh, defining words, especially in context like this, but I have never seen you give anything like a justification for claiming that A, Christianity isn't a religion, and B, evolution is. Uh, okay, and basically he thinks that, uh, he, he thinks that romantic, uh, uh, like, 
things, you know, romantic speakers. He he says he hates them and stuff like that. Basically, Beethoven was one of the people of the romantic period. Okay, this is the only part where you seem to be addressing something that even remotely looks like uh, transhumanism. But, alright, let's get down to it. I'm a transhumanist. I identify myself as a transhumanist. I think my beliefs and opinions satisfy enough of the criteria to be considered transhumanist. But I don't believe uh, that romantic period era stuff is utter crap at all. Yeah. And I don't really like Beethoven much, to be honest. Uh, I think there are better composers than he was than, like, for example, uh, Brahms was a romantic era composer, and not only do I absolutely enjoy him, but one of my favorite songs, Academic Festival's Overture, was written by him. Uh, I also really enjoy Mozart, although he technically was Baroque, not romantic, but uh, I think you get the idea. And I think a romantic pair, like beautiful music, beautiful poetry, stuff like that, I'm going to have to say that God has created us in a way to cherish those kind of things. And your evidence for that is? And people who kind of like hate it or whatever, I think they've really been brought up a shallow thinker and someone who like to think something beautiful is evil or whatever. Another one of my favorite romantic era artists, this guy was actually a playwright, Friedrich Schiller, identified using Kant's philosophy, which I know would be diametrically opposed to your philosophy, uh, to proclaim the good as the beautiful. So I honestly don't know where you're getting that. But I'm going to say, like, you think we're in a technological age. We don't need any of that garbage. The other thing that I find completely asinine about this entire conversation here is that you are talking to somebody who composes and arranges music as a hobby. Uh, and he identifies as a transhumanist at the same time. So I honestly do not know where you are getting this from. I compose and arrange music myself. Obviously, I think that music is a good thing. What the hell? I'm going to have to say that people way back then were a lot smarter than us. I have evidence for this. And that evidence is what now? People were not dumb uh, 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 go, 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 people like sharpening sticks at the fire, kind of that, whatever that kind of like made up nonsense. If you're arguing that uh, the idea that romantic era artists, the romantic era was in the 1800s, by the way, where people sitting around the fire, and, uh, then yeah, I agree, that's a ridiculous made up idea. Uh, but I don't think anybody is going to say that people in the 19th century uh, still were gathered around fires and that was the best they had. Uh, Wow, total fail, I to I. I. I don't know what else to call that. No, people were basically so smart. It's like, you know, Adam pre came pre-programmed straight from the hand of God with a high IQ. He could walk, talk, name the animals, and get married all first day. And probably had an IQ of four or 5,000. I don't know, way up there someplace. And he learned how to do things and to spread it on to further generations. Uh, first of all, I honestly think that my IQ is higher than Adam. Um... Four or five thousand. Um, I don't know where you got a number anything close to that. Evidence, maybe. Uh, how do you know Adam had such a high IQ? And what about Eve? Did she have an IQ that high? Or uh, did God choose not to make her smart because she was the woman? It makes sense. God seems to hate women everywhere else in the Bible. Why not uh, when he first creates women? Also, uh, the thing is, the Bible says that Adam lived almost 1,000 years. Right. So if we take 1,000 years, his supposed lifetime, and assume that he was working on the clock, naming animals uh, and other life forms uh, his entire life, 24-7, with about 10 billion different species, 
uh, it, he would have had to name one about every three seconds. Bit of uh, hard work there. And if you subtract the time that you would expect him to take eating, sleeping, fulfilling other bodily needs, etc., uh, then you get something that's more like a hundred times a second. And again, he's saying, oh, in order for our healings, we don't need, like, Jesus or Muhammad. This is another one of the logical fallacies that atheists always do. Uh, they always, like, um, they badmouth the gospel and always, always, always superimpose Islam on it. Islam has nothing to do with the gospel of Christ. Well, ignoring the fact that Muhammad saw himself as continuing the teachings of Christ, uh, if you honestly look at the Bible, including the gospels, you'll find that some of the things in there are just as abhorrent as some of the stuff in the Quran and some of the stuff that you see happening in countries where Islam is supreme. So I agree with you that uh, Christianity and Islam happen more or less independently. I don't see that Christianity is a whole lot better than Islam. It's somewhat better to be sure, but not not nearly as better as you think. It is a cult that I hate as much as you do. Finally something we agree on. Good to know that. But is the, the gospel of Christ is far from religion. Define religion. Basically, Islam is, yeah, invented by a psychopath, by a murdering pedophile false prophet. Okay, and your religion was founded by a band of marauding, murdering, raping, pillaging Hebrews. Not only that, but that's actually lauded in the Bible because this is why what God wanted them to do because they were his chosen people and screw everybody else on the planet. Who, just like, as much as evolutionism, turning people into violent... First of all, you don't give me any evidence to back that up. Second of all, you'll notice that quite a few people do some pretty nasty things in the name of Christianity, so... I wouldn't be talking, even if that evolution thing were true. Of course we don't need religion. Yeah, another thing we agree on. Uh, maybe this would be a continuing trend? Maybe? And I'm gonna have to say, you know, like, I'm not against... I'm not against technology. Yeah, another thing I agree with you on. Maybe we are kind of seeing a trend here. I mean, hopefully you like technology, given that you were using it to upload your video and you're using it to watch my video right now assuming that you're watching it the evolution says you're worth nothing you're just something washed up on the beach and you're part of the problem and the more of you we can get rid of the better because of pollution and such damn i knew it was too good to be true oh well uh yeah evolution doesn't say anything like that can you name a single evolutionist who says that we're part of the problem or anything like that. And in any case, how do you get from the fact that we evolved to we should be doing X, Y, and Z? How do you get from that is to the odd? I am against pollution and destroying things unnecessarily. We're supposed to be the stewards of this earth. Yeah, I agree. We essentially are the stewards of the earth. Uh, as somebody whose name I can't remember right now said, um, the world is not given to us by our parents, but lent to us by our children. The thing is, Christianity isn't exactly conducive to that worldview. In fact, it seems to be the more uber with religious people who seem to be more in favor of screwing up the planet because, you know, apparently we were given dominion over everything else and in any case, God is going to rescue us all in the end anyway, so who gives a crap? Earth. But I'm going to say the major problem, why the world is so, you know, effed up, as you want to say, is because of sin. Is there going to be a time in this video when I can stop asking you to back up your claims seriously? And Christians are basically the ones who started science. Uh, no. The scientific method, as we know it, as if, as if there was only one scientific method, there isn't each different field of science uses a slightly different method, but the scientific method as a whole, the idea of actually taking claims and going out and testing them, 
started with the ancient Greeks, who existed before uh, Christ was supposedly even born. And then, ironically enough, the whole Greek philosophy and science thing was continued by Islam, while Christianity was back in the Dark Ages. Now, it was Christians who imported science back uh, when Islam fell into the Dark Ages that they are still stuck in right now. But, you know, so what? And you really ought to watch out if you're being prideful or something like that. Why? Why should I not be proud of myself when I accomplish something? If I work hard to increase my intelligence, which I do, uh, why should I not be proud of myself for having done that? I mean, some of it might be genetic or prenatal or something like that, or shaped by your environment, so you have no control over it. But if you work hard to boost your intelligence, which you can do, you can exercise your brain just like you can exercise your body, why should you not be proud of yourself? One of the things that I think is the most evil thing about Christianity, if I thought the concept of evil were really valid, is that it negates the idea that you can be proud of yourself. Why should you not be proud of yourself? That is abhorrent. And you say your memory is quite low. Well, I'm going to have to say that I have a memory as why well I can remember what happened five years ago. Well, whoop de freaking doodle do. I mean, I remember things quite a lot more. I mean, I remember tiny things that happened ten years prior. So I don't know what you're going on about. Okay. Like five years ago, we went to see the Chronicles of Narnia or whatever. Ah, internal inconsistency. Don't you love it? Saying that you have a memory of five years and then you can't even remember the name of the movie you saw back then. Wow. There's no such thing as a human species. You're just giving a backstabbing oxymoron there. We are created distinctly apart from animals. Man is not an animal but has dominion over them. Remember when I said that uh, Christianity was more conducive to the idea that we should keep screwing up the world than naturalism? See what I mean? We had millions of nuclear ties apart from animals. Yeah, and do you have any idea how many nuclear ties are in the average human genome? Quite a lot. Millions of nuclear ties adds up to only one or two percent, you realize. This saying, like, we're all one species, or whatever, as you said in one of your future videos, is such a pseudoscientific flaw and fallacy. Wow, not just a pseudoscientific flaw, but a pseudoscientific fallacy as well. Wow. You must have screwed up pretty badly. Even though whenever you dismiss something as, quote-unquote, pseudoscience, you never actually explain why. Whenever I... Uh, say that something is pseudoscientific, I actually explain why. And usually it's because the person isn't willing to revise their beliefs when they're falsified. There's scientific evidence that we came from smart, intelligent, giant people. Do I need to say it again? Basically getting angry and stuff is no scientific attitude. And now we're getting back to stuff on which we agree. I fully agree. If you're trying to evaluate something scientifically, you should do it as clear, cool, and level-headed as possible. And I'm probably one of the people who's more able to do that. I definitely have, at least people tell me, I have a pretty solid inner locus of control. Hey, if there's an error in Mike's videos, I'm going to correct it, whether you like it or not. Again, couldn't agree with you more, I fly. In fact, this is why I at least respect you more than other YouTube creationists like, you know, Nephilim Free or Venom Fang X or other, like, Kent Hoven, you know, the person that you love so much, because they tend to disable their comments and video responses uh, or else block people who do comment. I've commented on your videos several times and never once have been blocked by you. 
yet I make one comment on one of Nephi's videos, and I'm blocked. So, good for you, Y2Y. You're at least able to take some criticism. And I couldn't agree with you more. If someone makes a mistake, I'm going to correct them, whether they like it or not. Basically, Darwinism is saying, oh, it's just a chemical imbalance, and you take drugs, and you end up dying. Please cite the explicit part of any of Darwin's writings, The Origin of Species, The Scent of Man, Voyage of the Beagle, any of that, where he says anything remotely like that. So, that's it. Bye.